Last time we spoke about how a mosquito solved a case of car theft. Today I am going to tell you about a fascinating story where a person who was sentenced to death in a rape and murder case, that person was acquitted after 48 years and his acquittal come because of some blow flies and maggots. Hello everyone, my name is Munish. I welcome all of you in Crime Tuck family and I hope everyone in the family is doing well and fine. Now this story is about Steven Truscott. He was born in 1945 and uh, the incident took place in 1959. To be precise, on June 9, 1959. That time, uh, Steven was in class 8. He was going on a bicycle with his friend Lynn Harper. She was in class 7, one year junior. And they were going uh, somewhere. And there was a river. On that uh, river, there was a bridge. They were crossing the bridge. And after crossing the bridge, Lynn Harper was dropped by Stephen Trescott. Next day, Lynn Harper's body was found by the police. There was a missing complaint lodged by the family members of Harper. And when the police started investigating, they got to know that Trescott was the one, uh, the Trescott was the last person who saw Lynn Harper alive. Now, in any murder case, the person who was last seen with the victim, that person becomes the prime suspect number one. So on, based on the suspicion, the police started interrogating and, uh, you know, on June 10, he was questioned for the first time. June 11, he was detained by the police and later on he was arrested. Official arrest was June 12, 1959. The police charged uh, Lynn Harper with first degree of murder. It means that, uh, you know, that he uh, would be eligible for the maximum sentence. The case went on. And in September 1959, he was sentenced to death. That time he was 14 years old. A 14 year old was tried as adult. Within two months, he was sentenced to death. And his death came on, you know, uh, based on this evidence, some statements and the post-mortem report, which said that Lynn Harper died somewhere in between 7.45 a.m. Uh, to 7.15 a.m. I beg your pardon, from 7.15 a.m. to 7.45 a.m. on June 9. And remember, uh, according to uh, the statement which was given by Stephen Truscott, who was accused and then found guilty, he said that he dropped Lynn Harper around 8 o'clock. So the timing was matching and police thought that he is the prime suspect. They booked him, they charged him with murder and the court order his, uh, you know, life sentence, uh, you know, sentenced to death. And there were several appeals and based on his age, because he was just 14 years, his death sentence was converted into life imprisonment. He was sent to jail from one jail to another jail. He tried um, to appeal against the decision, but... You know, there was no relief even from the Supreme Court and the case went on. He was uh, put into jail. Later on, uh, in 2002, Stephen Truscott was on parole and then he gave an interview to a channel, to a national channel. And uh, in that interview, he again told the person who was interviewing that, uh, you know, I never committed the crime. I was the person who dropped her. And then he saw that there was a, a car which came and picked Lynn Harper. And I don't know what happened later on, but I was charged. I was sentenced to death. And later on, since then, I am in jail. I am out on parole. This interview was given in 2002. And later on, uh, there were debates in several communities that uh, why not this case should be reinvestigated by the police. Later on, the government uh, looked serious about it and they started reinvestigating the case. Uh, a retired judge was you know, uh, tasked to investigate the case with the help of police. And when they started investigating the case, the forensic experts were also included in the team. 
Now, hardly there was any forensic evidence left in that case, but still, uh, they started looking into the photographs of uh, Lynn Harper when her body was found. And they started looking at the injuries, um, at the private parts of Lynn Harper uh, through the photographs. And uh, then what they decided to exhume the body. Now, exhuming the body is basically possible in those cases where the body has been, uh, you know, buried. So Lynn Harper body was exhumed. It was year 2006. And uh, you know, they were unable to trace any DNA because the skeleton was very old. Remember, the crime took place in 1959. And we are, uh, you know, when I'm talking about this particular uh, exhuming of body, it took place in 2006. So many years had gone. And that time, uh, you know, this uh, Lynn Harper, the victim, she was 12 years old when she died. So there were hardly any um, evidence of label on those uh, skeleton. But when the skeleton was given to forensic experts, they started looking into the blue flies and maggots. Now there were some eggs, some larva of those blue fly and maggots, and they started looking into what possibly could be the age of the skeleton, what possibly could be this age of that egg and larva. And uh, based on their study, they started preparing a report. Now, one of the forensic experts, he was very curious to find out about when Lynn Harper died. Because as I told you earlier, the <coughs> conviction of Truscott based on the uh, report which was given by the autopsy expert, the person who had uh, you know, conducted autopsy of Lynn Harper. And he, in his statement, had told the court that Lynn Harper died on June 9, between 7.15 a.m. to 7.45 a.m. In that period only she died. Now, when this forensic expert started the um, uh, study of those eggs and larva, what he found that Lynn Harper might have died on June 10, not June 9. And uh, that was shocking to everyone. It is, It was fascinating for everyone. There was hope that something might turn around. Again, there was a panel of forensic experts. They started looking into it and what they found that uh, it was impossible that Lynn Harper died on June 9 when she was last seen with uh, Stephen Truscott who was sentenced to death later on life sentence uh, you know in jail uh, he had to spend entire life in jail now this was shocking for him also the report was prepared it was submitted before the court and based on that report, the court was also convinced that Truscott might have not committed the murder and Lynn Harper, Lynn Harper died on the next day. And next day, Truscott was with the police. He was in the school and there was no possible way that uh, Truscott might have committed that murder. Based on that report, based on these evidence, he was acquitted after 48 years. This story tells us about how these forensic uh, reports are important. Now, talking about that autopsy report, which said that uh, Lynn Harper died between 7 15 a.m. to 7 45 a.m. on June 9, when she was with uh, Truscott, that person later on told the media that he had prepared three reports. But the police never bothered to you know, give the two reports before the court because it might have debunked the theory of police that Truscott was indeed the murderer and rapist in this case. This came very later and this technology of uh, you know reading the uh, um, X, of, uh, X and larva of blue flies and maggots, it was not possible in year 1959-60. Uh, so uh, the court also said that it might have not been possible at that point of time. But today, science is very advanced. The forensic is very advanced. And that is why we can come at this stage and we can acquit Truscott. And Truscott was acquitted on August 28, 2007. 
This is a story which tells us how forensic science is important and how small clue a mosquito solving a case of car theft. Some eggs and larva of blue flies and maggots led to acquittal of a person who was sentenced to death while he was just 14 years old. And later on, he was acquitted in this case. So this was the story of how you know, some eggs and larva of some what we possibly call insects, blow flies and maggots, they solved the case. And this person, Stephen Truscott, came out of jail after 48 years. He was acquitted later on. He uh, was told by the Supreme Court that uh, they are sorry about the system. They are sorry that he had to spend almost his entire life into jail. And uh, later on, there was some compensation given to his family by the police department, by the government. But end of the day, Truscott was acquitted. So again, I will come back with such fascinating stories, some true stories about crime that how they were solved. And if you have any suggestion, if you want me to tell you about any story, just uh, put it on the comment box. I'll be more than happy to share those stories with you. Thank you very much.